What's good with it, y'all? It's your boy Santo G. Back at it. You already know. Spreading unity, prosperity, and respect. But above all, if you're new here, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. And at the end of this video, if you like what I'm doing and you like my stories, hit me with a thumbs up and check some of my past videos. I guarantee it's going to be a lot of crazy stories, knowledge, wisdom, just overall good entertainment, good stories. I appreciate you guys joining the movement. If you hit that subscribe and you hit that notification, without further ado, man, let's get into it. Today, I wanted to talk about the day that I got caught on the yard sharpening, trying to sharpen a knife because it was a weapon stock. It was a piece of metal that the homie had gave me to take out to yard because I was at the Shafter CCF. And inside the buildings, we had nothing but carpet. There was no type of concrete inside the building to sharpen anything, type of metal or anything like that. You had to do it out in the yard. And I'm going to get into how everything happened. Before that, I want to shout out Killer Kush. You know what I mean? Your boy went to East Lowe's today. I went to go check them out. They blessed your boy with some of that za with a saucepan this is like one of those jumbo blunts it has two gram killer og five gram live resin this is one of those hash holes i'm gonna do this on the next vlog for today i want to check out these pre-rolls shout out killer kush I appreciate you guys sponsoring this channel, man. And blessing your boy with a little goodie bag, man. So, for this video, we're going to tap into the Killer Kush pre roast See what that's all about. Off top. Good presentation. See that? Glass tip. I've never seen these right here. Ooh. That fire. Oh, I'm gonna have to tap into more of these because I like pre rolls. I like when I could just light it and just burn it. Check that out right there. Have you ever seen a little miniature pre roll inside a glass tip like that? I have not. <sighs> Killing it. Already off tops, presentation, everything. I say 13 out of 10, man. Don't sleep on them. Kill a kush. So. Let's get into this story now. So, like I said, all this happened when I was at the Shafter CCF. Um, I was out of state in Oklahoma for four years. And due to the being on lockdown for so long and stuff, my points dropped. So I went from a level three to a level two. I got sent back down to Shafter MCCF. That's when they were sending people to the Shafter MCCF, Adelanto MCCF. That's when I believe they opened California City, CCF. As a matter of fact, that's where um, old boy just paroled from. Fucking Chito Ranas. That's where he just paroled from, California City. And that's where Devour's at right now. You know what I mean? So I ended up going to one of those places, one of those CCFs. And when I got there, we were just opening those CCFs up again. So, as soon as I get there, I'm the last bus to get there. Oklahoma was the last couple of buses to get there to fill up that prison. Because it was people coming from different prisons. Mississippi, Arizona, Oklahoma, and then also different prisons because the point system had changed. So, I end up landing there at the CCF and we're the last bus that gets there. So... We get there and everything's just a free-for-all. There's no type of segregation. There's, we're all sharing the same bathroom, same showers, same tables, everything. And we're coming from a level three. Other people are coming from other level twos, Chukawala and stuff like that. So as soon as I get there, I get at the homie from Paramount, Paramount Party Boys. I get at the homie Sparky and I tell him like, hey G, like, 
what's up with this? Like, it's just a open free for all, you know what I'm saying? So we end up talking to a couple other homies. As a matter of fact, all my Armenian homies, shout out my boy Peanut from Armenian Power. My boy Peanut was right there, and it was also um, the homie from Northside Bowling, the homie Sneaky from Northside Bowling. Them two were actually the ones in the forefront, and they ended up getting at the Morenos and pretty much establishing, like, these are your tables, these are our tables, these are your showers, these are your bathrooms, and it almost ended up creating a big old riot because there was a lot of people of not our race that were mad about that about us coming and pretty much establishing uh segregation you know what i mean like you guys use that we use this but it was just to avoid any problems in the future you know what i'm saying they were seeing it wrong but we were just looking at it like look we're just opening this prison it's only right we do it how we've been doing it to avoid problems we don't want to just have a free-for-all Next thing you know, we're fighting over the bathrooms or we're fighting over a shower or whatever the case is. You know what I mean? We're fighting over a TV, you know? Because that's where I said, if you guys seen where I said that I was charging a phone with four AA batteries, it was at that CCF because we couldn't have TVs, we couldn't have hot pots. The only thing we were allowed was like a Walkman, a CD player, and stuff like that. So... In order to charge a phone, you had to use batteries because we didn't have nowhere to plug into. There was no outlets. You don't have nothing electrical on your bunk unless it's battery operated, you know? These it. So we end up doing all that. We establish everything. And they end up passing around a couple bangers, you know what I mean? And it was the homie Sparky from Paramount Party Boys. You know what I mean? He's the one that would get a point on everything. And he had gave me one. I already had my own banger, you know? I already had my own fierro. And I go out to yard one day. I just got off the phone. I give the phone to the homie. I even had my charger on me at the time. I'm just pushing out to yard. I'm barely going out to yard the second to last unlock, so I'm only going to be out there like an hour, you know? I'm just trying to do my one hour that you got to do. It was mandatory, you got to go out for one unlock, you know? So I was just going out to do my mandatory yard. And as soon as I step out to yard, the homie's running laps. And he starts walking with me. And he's like, hey, my boy, do me a favor. He's like, here, he gives me another piece of metal. Keep in mind, I already have one in my shoe. I already have one in one shoe. A full blown banger ready. So he gives me a piece of metal. It's it's like from the binder, you know them big binders in the middle, they have a piece of metal. That's where we got the pieces of metal from. So we end up straightening it out and then now you just gotta get a point. So he gives me a piece of metal. He's like here, do me a favor, start getting a point on it, you know? So it's me, it's the homie baby face from Southside Players and it's the homie um, Puppet from La Mirada. It's us three walking. So, we're walking the yard. It's like a big old square. We're walking the yard and we stop. There's a lot of people posted along one wall, you know? They're just chilling, watching everything. You know, so we'll be chilling. Say the wall's right here, then the gun tower is straight ahead, you know, on the other side. So we're right there chilling and I'm start getting a point, you know, I'm, I'm like trying to get it sharpened, you know, I'm just chilling and I'm little by little, little by little, you know what I mean? Just chopping it all like, oh yeah, woo, 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 little by little trying to get a point, you know what I mean? So I'm talking to the homie from Southside Players and next thing you know, I guess the homie puppet kept looking at the tower too much because I'm right there chopping it up with him. I'm not trying to look at the tower because I'm not trying to look suspect. If you're looking around, you're looking suspect. So I'm just keeping them. I'm telling them to look out for me, you know, so I'm not looking at no one. So then the homie is running laps. Keep in mind, he's still running laps and he knows what I'm doing. So he's at the other side. He finally makes it to where I'm at. He's like, hey, boy, 
He's like, get up and walk, fool. He's like, the tower just got on the walkie-talkie, and they pointed over here towards you, fools. So I'm like, fuck. I already have one, sh one strap, you know what I mean? One banger in my shoe. I put the metal stock in my other shoe. We start walking. Boom. We, as I'm walking up, I see two huras coming. They get three fools, boom, against the wall, right? There's three fools in front of us, boom, against the wall. Now we're coming. I hear in the radio, the ones behind you. Boom, he stops us. Boom, you three against the wall. It's only two huras. So now it's six people. There's two huras. They're searching two fools. It's three people, then it's me, then it's the other two homies. So they're searching two people. They finish with them. He's coming. He's about to search the other fool, and then me. I'm next. So I'm trying to tell the homie puppet. I'm telling him, like, hey, fool, run. He's like, huh? I'm like, run, fool. Huh? He don't have nothing. I have everything. I'm just telling him to run to cause a distraction. He freezes. So now the Huda's walking to me. He's right behind me. As soon as he taps me on my shoulder, I just start running. Run to the toilet and I get the fucking weapon stock. Like from all the, I get the weapon stock. I still have a banger in my shoe. I get the weapon stock and I throw it in the fucking toilet. And I flush and it doesn't go down. Motherfucking bitch goes and it just starts spinning. It was too long that it was just spinning. Because the toilets have a little ass circle. So that way, you know, you can't really flush big stuff like that. You can't hide stuff in there. It's a little circle. So it just. So I'm like, fuck, I keep flushing. The hood comes from behind me and grabs me. I fucking throw him off of me. And I'm still flushing. Then boom, I get tackled. Boom, they tackle me. They end up getting the weapon stock. And then boom, I get handcuffed. They take me to the hole in the front. They end up having my shoes outside of my cell. The whole time they were so happy that they got the weapon stock that I was trying to flush that they didn't even check my shoes. There was a fierro in my shoe. If I'm lying, I'm dying. You know what I mean? I put that on her. You know what I mean? There was a fucking banger still in my shoe boom i pull my shoes out they searched me they throw me in there they were so happy and so stupid because like i said they had just opened up that prison again all them co's were cops it was shafter police that were in training if you don't believe me look it up that shafter mccf was ran by the shafter police but it was all police that were in the academy still so homies were pulling females left and right stuff like that you know what i mean but that's for another day. So they were stupid, you know what I mean? They were so happy that they found that, they didn't even search me no more. They ended up finding the charger, you know what I mean? I had it inside a little pocket inside my shorts, you know, that I had sewed on the pocket in the middle. So they ended up finding the charger, they ended up, but they didn't even trip on the charger. They didn't even charge me for it. They just got me for, they were trying to get me for a battery on the Huda when I pushed the Huda off of me, and then they were getting me for the um, attempt to manufacture an inmate weapon and I have all this on my 128G you know what I mean so they end up having me in there for that two days go by I come to get a shower it's another CO keep in mind two days go by I'm looking outside the cell like fuck I know I'm done you know once they find that I know I'm done two days go by they call me to go to the shower boom I go and I shower and I'm talking to the CEO, like, cool, woo, woo, woo. He's like, yeah, I heard what happened, woo, woo. I guess the fool that actually, like, grabbed me at the waist and tackled me that I was, like, wrestling with, I guess he was one of those new booties in the academy that a lot of people were clowning. So when all that happened with me and I ended up tussling with him and all that, he ended up getting some type of, like, oh, you know, like a finally a pat on the back, like, okay, okay, he could hang type shit, you know? So he's like, oh, yeah, I heard about all that, woo, woo. He was trying to be cool. So I pretty much was chopping it up with him, like, just cool, you know, like, oh, man, you know, like, I was just glad I was outside the cell, you know what I mean? I'm right here thinking, like, fuck, I only got, like, a couple years left, now I'm going to pick up another case, like, two to four year case on a fucking weapon, like, fuck, I'm stressed out, not even going to lie. So he ends up telling me, like, hey, you know what, I got your property right here. Since you're right here with me, I'm going to transpack it. You gotta watch me, trans pack it, so 
fuck it. I'm going to let you stay out a little bit longer. You know, he was being cool. So I ended up having another pair of shoes in my property. And he seen the pair of shoes I had. So I just told him, like, hey, do me a favor. I don't want to transpack both because then they're going to choose whichever ones themselves. So throw these away from me. That fool grabbed them, threw them away. I was like, whew, thank God. They did not find it. And the CEO threw it away for me. Ha, tell me about that. You know what I mean? That's crazy. I ended up beating it later on. I ended up going to the shoe at Corcoran with the hole. I didn't make it to the shoe across the street. I ended up going to the hole at New Corcoran at Sarev. And I was back there for three months fighting it. I'm gonna tell you guys the story of how everything went when I got to the shoe. I ended up following somebody there. Somebody had left before all that happened. And then when I get to the shoe, I'm in a cage and they put them in a cage across from me. <clears throat> that fool starts saying, hey, I already told everyone right here, I'm not part of it. Like, you don't gotta follow me just to make sure that I fucking do what I have to do type shit. Some whole way out shit, you know what I mean? The homie actually thought that I followed him to try to get him type shit. And it was just him high thinking people were trying to get him and he left. So then seeing me there in the hole <laughs> with him later, he's like, what the fuck? He was still on the trip, you know? Just another little funny side story. If you guys want to hear about that one, let me know. It's already 17 minutes, almost 18 minutes. You know what I mean? I don't want to talk your guys' ear off. But this was the time that I ended up getting caught sharpening an uh, inmate weapon on the yard. And almost got caught with another full-blown weapon. And I was able to pretty much get away from it by telling the Huda when he was transpacking my stuff to throw away the pair of shoes that I had. You know what I mean? Because I wasn't going to take them shoes with me. They pass it to the x-ray machine next to you know, bam, I get caught with another weapon. That's all bad. But all this is real, raw, uncut stories. Just me sharing my life story. It's not because I condone any of this. It's not because I glorify it. I'm just simply sharing my story. If I was to share my life now, believe me, I got a pretty normal life. Just taking care of my kids, working and coming home, man. I'm just trying to get it by any means. This YouTube stuff has helped a lot of people and I mean help people by changing lives man helping people make money and change their lives in a better path that's why for the people that when I said that if I hit the 100k I'm gonna get the YouTube logo tatted with 100k that's the only reason why I said I would get it tatted because I feel like me sharing my life story with you guys has kept me off these streets has kept me with my family has kept me doing good. So although I share these stories that are raw, that are uncut, that can sometimes seem like I'm glorifying certain things, that's not necessarily what I'm doing, you know? I'm just sharing my story, sharing these stories that are real, raw, entertaining, to give you guys a real perspective of what goes on behind them walls. You know what I'm saying? Unity, prosperity, and respect, above all, I'm trying to slowly make these videos a little bit longer. Shout out Killer Kush. Like I said, who else you know has pre-rolls like this with a glass tip? Fire. I've only been hitting it a couple of times in between talking to you guys. And I could tell you that's him. Is that Zop.